Well, shooters, it's hard to believe, but we've run out of time. But before we go, I want to ask Susanna, tell us the name of the book again and where we can get it. It's called From Lubies to the Legislature, One Woman's Fight Against Gun Control. You can get it at the usual haunts, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, or my own website, SusannaHupp.com. Makes a great gift for the people that might be a little squishy about guns in your life. That's a great book, actually. And Thank it you. tells a story that must have been very difficult for you to read. It, it was a very difficult thing to write, but I'm glad it's out there. And now my kids know the real story, too. Okay. Josh, tell me about the movie. When do you go into production again? Uh, we're going to be going into production in the next few months. Next few months. Yeah. And pretty excited about it. Yeah, we're, we're really excited, man. We've, uh, we've integrated our training facility into the film as far as um, taking the actors and giving them uh, some real training uh, so that when they get on the big, you know, Hollywood screen, they don't look like they're acting. They look like the real no, deal. No, but so. you've got some, you've got some good stars in there, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've got Jeffrey Dean Morgan as the lead, and uh, we've got uh, Robert Patrick uh, also playing a second lead, and we're currently uh, in talks with Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, very good. And the name is? Will Gardner. Will Gardner. Will Gardner. Will yeah. Gardner. Okay, and the director is? Uh, director is going to be Max Martini. Max Martini. Okay. Hey, what's going on? Tell me about Armed American Radio. You guys are always growing over there. It seems like it. I can't keep track of the amount of stations that we're putting on. Salem Radio Network's doing a wonderful job. The program is growing uh, very, very quickly. Uh, about 130 markets across the country. I kind of lost track, James, over 100 markets uh, in 36 states right now. But it's the only nationally syndicated broadcast in America focused entirely 100% on your right to carry a firearm. And it is a right. Yeah, hey, and, and the only guy I know that's never had laryngitis. Oops. <laughs> yeah. The jinx anyway. is out. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but I'm looking forward to getting you in the studio, and, and uh, we'll let listeners know when we can bring you to Atlanta and sit down with you and do the show with you in, uh, in, the, in Atlanta Live for everybody. Hey, thank you, Mark, and thank you, panel, for your valuable insight and sharing your experiences and comments with our viewers. We will see you again next week right here on Stop the Threat. The tactics you use in your daily life can help you avoid or prevent a criminal act. And if you're a legal gun owner, you have more options than those who are not. Accurate carjacking statistics are not available because currently police agencies and some jurisdictions charge the crime of carjacking as simply auto theft. Using this as our guideline. Hello Shooters, my name is James Toll. Coming up next on Stop the Threat, carjacking. That is the subject of today's episode. How well are you prepared? What tactics would you use to prevent being carjacked? The carjacking reenactment you are about to see is of a real crime, one that took place in a grocery store parking lot. But this shopper was well armed, trained, and prepared.
may not know this, but carjacking's been around since Henry Ford. And today, the number of carjackings is skyrocketing. Our panel of experts will examine our carjacking reenactment and share some of the tactics that everyone should keep in mind while driving around your city or your community. In most cases, we would suggest surrendering your keys and contacting law enforcement, especially since statistics prove that 92% of all carjackings involve a weapon. Most carjackings occur in common areas, intersections when you stop for a traffic light, at schools waiting for your children, in parking lots of businesses and apartment complexes. Some of these criminals tend to choose dark, secluded areas. They prey upon easy targets, someone weaker than themselves, someone who will not put up a fight. Women, young, and the old are the most vulnerable to these attacks. On Stop the Threat, we will show you a woman who was prepared and successfully defended herself against this crime. When we come back, I'll introduce you to this week's panel. Hello, shooters. Welcome back to Stop the Threat. Our panel includes Josh Duhon, instructor and class coordinator of the Texas Pistol and Rifle Academy, which is servicing civilian shooters as well as law enforcement. Josh now has been able to fulfill his dream by helping returning veterans by producing a movie which deals with returning veterans and the problems that they are having coming back into civilian life. And the undisputed king of talk radio, Mr. Mark Walters. He can be heard every week on his own show called Armed American Radio. And special guest, Susanna Hupp, author and Texas state legislator who is responsible for changing the concealed carry laws in Texas. Driven by her own personal tragedy, Susanna has written a book about her experience. Welcome all. And let me ask you this question just to get started with. You know, Mark, you were almost a victim of a carjacking. That's right. Give me a little on that. Yeah, it was a, more of an attempted carjacking. I was actually on my way to work at, uh, back in 2002 at 6.20 in the morning on my way to my office when as I was approaching a traffic signal in the mean streets of Tampa, Florida, deciding to go left or go straight, a Jeep Cherokee jumped out in front of me that had been stopped in the right-hand lane. Pulled out in front of me, blocked me as the light changed. Uh, two individuals exited the vehicle, attempted to get into the car off of my front left bumper in the left-hand turn lane. Uh, I saw, obviously, what was happening. It was very frightening. I was lawfully carrying my sidearm. I drew my sidearm. The two individuals then turned their attention towards me. I drew my firearm uh, and pointed it in their direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Never had to fire a shot, thank God and ended the attempt against me. The two individuals took and off. And drove away safely. Drove away safely yeah, right okay, after. Okay, yeah. and whatever happened to that? Was that, uh, was that ever, did law enforcement ever come in there? Was that guy ever located? I assume it was they, a guy. Uh, they did not. There were two individuals. Uh, I left the scene and uh, went on my way. Ironically, I was the one that felt was wound up blocking traffic. When the light turned green, everybody took off, including the woman in the car off of my left bumper who appeared to be their number one target. And I went to work and experienced what you know you can only imagine was a huge adrenaline dump, the headache, the shaking, the sweats. Uh, I later contacted a friend of mine at the uh, police department to make sure that I was in the right just for my own peace of mind. And okay. was well, I fortunately, we need to stop right here because we have created a reenactment of what might be thought of as a typical carjacking scenario. And we'll run that right after we return and we'll get everybody's feedback. And this is a reenactment of maybe your typical shopper. And it is a carjacking. So let's watch the reenactment.
I'd stop her right there. Okay, very good. What have you seen so far? Well, she was clearly very aware of her surroundings, which I think is a big plus for her. Yeah, she, that's, she, that's the type of person. Her head was on a spin when she came yeah, out. Yeah, that's okay. the type of person. She, she that wasn't over paranoid. Away. She wasn't reading a breast. My friend Rob Pincus likes to say she wasn't ordering off of a Braille menu so she could keep her eye on the front door, yet she was very well aware of her surroundings as she was exiting the, the grocery store. I'm not sure if she noticed the individual get out of the car or not. I don't if it was yeah, hard I, I, I kind of looked at it. She looked like she might have seen it out of the side out of the right. Corner, right. The, the yeah, point you was that she obviously, you know, exiting the grocery store was aware of her surroundings and uh, just that awareness, I think whether or not she identified visually the individual getting out of the car, I'm sure that she felt it. Because right. you can usually feel this mm -hmm. from an energy standpoint, and I'm sure she felt it. So, yeah. uh, well, as a woman, Susanna, I mean, you, you you know when men are looking at you. Come on, right? So here you are. Uh, oh, don't you? Come on. You, the, all women know that. They know what. Sure. Men, sure, they do. Okay. <laughs> She's Come on. Come sure. on. So you know if you're walking and, and you're you're already sensitive to the area. Well, I think I think he's right. I think he's that that if you are tuned into your surroundings, you feel that sort of right. thing. You know, it's right. a, your spidey senses right. go. Up, so. I, 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 guys would even think that. No, I don't think this it. guy would have yeah. gone yeah, for her. You know, you definitely, you definitely feel it. Um, she was walking around in what we would refer to as condition yellow. She was paying attention to her surroundings. Yeah. She did not have a, a hand on a weapon. She, she was not in a she paranoid wasn't state. Yet, she was simply awake, which aware. is the key to being prepared and avoiding is being aware. And this woman was clearly aware of her surroundings. Now, I will point out that sometimes, even with eyes in the back of our head, we can still get caught off guard. I've interviewed very many folks on the radio program. Sure. I've written about them, written columns about them, and written about them in my book, that you can still get caught literally sure. off guard even when that's why that's where the preparation and the training comes in Josh. Well, certainly you know uh, mm -hmm. this is obviously what she's getting ready to execute is a conditioned response to a threat you know she yeah, didn't great do this naturally well said. you know uh, this was something that was probably beat into her from a memory muscle channel right. standpoint and we have found that to condition the body to do this it takes somewhere around, we used to think it was 25 to 3,500 repetitions. After hundreds of after action reports, we realized that's not the case. To get somebody to be able to execute this when a firearm is on them, they have to do it well over 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and she's obviously practiced this routine, walking through her home, hand on the weapon, to, to get over, and I haven't seen the end of this video, but what I will say is this, before we watch the end of this video, and we tell everybody this, in a carjacking situation, no matter what happens, you do not get in the vehicle and go to another location. Yeah, right. Right. Hey, Absolutely not. Right. 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 She's got the drop on her, too. Me. She you has a firearm right pointed at her. It's in a crowded place, and they're going to find my body, and they're going to get you. Okay, but let's do that. What's wrong with... And I don't know how this is going to turn out. What's wrong with the man's asking to the keys of the car, give him the keys and walk away? I would take the keys, I'd throw them that way, and I'd walk away. Your vehicle is not worth your life. Your vehicle is not worth your life. It'll be interesting to see. We've all heard the adage that you can't outdraw a drawn weapon. I'm not so sure that that's the case. I've well, interviewed and talked to too many people yeah. who have. However, we don't know what the response is going to be here. Does she have a firearm? Does she not have no, a firearm? No, we haven't seen it. We so haven't we don't seen know it. how this is going you to know, turn You know, we at yet. TPA run a drill in our advanced pistol series where the drill is, hey man, you're getting hijacked. Here are my keys. Take the keys. You turn, and as you turn, you're coming back. Right you know, what the response to this. Well, and even there, she's far you know enough away that she may be keys, able to right. escape. You know, realistically, she is in a crowded or semi-crowded place in the middle of the day. Um, you know, she may have the ability to just get away at this point. In, a, in the situation yeah, where you have the choice possible. of fight or flight, Flight is always better yeah, if, you, if you don't flight. have and to. It is your, it is your natural, it's your natural body, flight, it's, it's your reaction. And it's a lot easier reaction. to explain in court. Absolutely. Now that I have Absolutely. kids, and I know hey, Mark has he stole kids, the car, different. I ran off, he got it, insurance is but covering it, I'm cool. you can't run away when I'm you've cool. got kids in the car, or no, if you've no, got you kids can't. next to okay. you. Well, it's a situation that's a different situation. You know? Okay, no, 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 the situation changed. But when she came out of the store, she appeared to be very alert. Aware. Alert. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. Aware and looking around, doing all the right things. If at some point she felt uncomfortable, What's wrong with going and back if she the had store? seen the individual, we would do this all the time, especially with women, uh, where a man is trying to close the distance, because that's what this guy is doing. As soon as he got out of the car, if she had identified that, she could have turned around, looked him right in the eye, and said, hey, man, don't I know your mother? 
<laughs> you would have yeah. caught him yeah. off guard. Just, you make a very good point. Off. You, you make a very good yeah. point, and that is that we want to acknowledge the threat. We want to make eye contact Absolutely. at that moment in time when it's coming. She didn't have a chance. She didn't. But if she had, no. There's also something else. Yeah, the way that was set up. I mean, the car was here. She was there. No. If it had been earlier in the parking lot, yeah. Um, As I said, that's right. just another <coughs> situation. If one, she had seen the one thing that else we'd like to point out, we haven't talked about yet, is you'll notice that she also parked very close to the facility that she was in. Yeah. So you know, she was parked right. She was literally doing everything right from what we've seen so far. Right. And if and if you're judging by what you've seen with her head on a swivel coming out, we can assume that w that she parked there intentionally. If she's thinking and that yeah. aware that she did that intentionally on her way in in the parts that we didn't see. Oh, okay, okay. Let, let's play it to the end. We'll run that right after we return. Let's do it one more time and we'll play it right to the end. You know, the first thing I saw there was that let, let's just move right to the end and then we can back it up again. I think we have to nominate her for, for performance there, <laughs> uh, James. Yeah. You, did you notice coming out of the grocery store, the guy over on the right? Did anybody see him sitting Absolutely. there with the carriage? Yeah. I mean, that guy was, he would already <laughs> made me nervous. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let's go to the end just really quickly and then we can back up and we can make remarks. I think I would have made that. You're talking about that guy. Yeah, that yeah. guy right okay. there. Yeah. Okay. I think she should have made the 911 call from inside the car. Well, or back in the or back in the building. I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure I'm not sure right that she the under the scenario we saw. I'm not sure she had the time to do that. But there was a couple things that I noticed. Uh, first off, you know, she obviously had a firearm. We made the comment earlier that it's difficult to outdraw a drawn weapon. Well, she didn't really have to outdraw him. No, she right. fired from within. That and again, inside her pocket or her purse, which yeah. is training. Yeah. So we can make some good assumptions on this video yeah. that this she, one was I obviously I think she very was well trained. She, was, she knew what she was doing. Um, uh, and we can get into the whole caliber thing about shooting through your purse, but I, I don't want to get into that. But I thought she was, I thought she was trained, didn't you? Well, yeah, having so. said that, I, so. I mean, obviously she had some training, but where she really uh, dropped the ball was after this engagement had taken place, she followed up on that shooter. She should have stayed on yeah. the shooter, right. kicked his weapon away, <clears throat> made the call while keeping a keeping gun, a on, gun him, on him, Darn as right. well as alerting everybody in the vicinity, 
hey, I'm trying to be robbed, yeah. call the police. Let somebody else call the police. She's in daylight in okay. a crowded parking okay. lot. Okay. That, that's, you know, now that's, 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 a, to again, that's uh, a topic, uh, too, that we could, always, we could always discuss is let somebody else. We can make the assumption that other people, after hearing a gunshot, are going to make phone calls. And this is where the shooter can get themselves in an awful lot of trouble because now we're going to see, as you all know, that various people see different things. Yeah completely differently. Somebody else may see something differently than what you Absolutely. saw or what she experienced. And one thing that she did here that I noticed immediately was that she turned her back on the threat. Absolutely. As she and made she the phone call and retreated. And she did this time watching it. It did appear didn't look like she, she saw the she guy saw get out of the, the car. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. seemed she, to contradict some of the training she, she appeared she could have made eye contact right. and stopped him right in his tracks right. and said, hey, man, I, I know you. <laughs> you know, and turned around and said, it was good seeing you. Turn around and walk off my, and get in the car. And, my guess and he is, would have been like, man, I don't want to rob somebody who knows me. <laughs> you know, it could have been avoided uh, you know, entirely. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. That's crazy enough to broad daylight in a parking lot, put a gun in her face. But, you know, I don't know takes, about stopping takes, with, hey, I know your mother. Listen, uh -huh. all it takes is a split second to change it from being this type of encounter to another encounter where she gets back in the eye line of maybe the guy that was outside the grocery store and says, hey, this guy's really, I don't know this man. Anything that would have brought attention to her scenario would right. have made him think twice about pulling out that firearm and doing what he did. Okay, let, let's look at it this way. She appeared to be right from the go. She did. She did. Confidence Everywhere. and knowing what she yeah. was doing. She was this not is be a not, yeah, this is not the kind of woman, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but it doesn't look like the kind of woman who says, Hey, I know your mother. I mean, I think when she saw that guy, when he when she saw that guy from the corner of her eye get out of the car, she was already kicking into right. here's what might happen. Yeah. And walks over to her car, and then by that time she's yeah. she, well, she was she's she was do. prepared. She picked that parking spot, we can tell by making the assumption of seeing her aware of her surroundings when she exited, as you said. <laughs> hindsight, we have the benefit of hindsight being 2020 vision. We can right. see clear looking back. I should have made the assumption that she had a firearm. Mm -hmm. in the first portion of the tape because of the way she was carrying her. Well,